to play more melodically? Well, that exercise that I just played was from Tim Armacost's new book, The Jazz Saxophone Book, which will show you exactly how to do just that. Now, I'm going to review his book plus demo two exercises that I honestly think are going to benefit you. Stay tuned to the end because I'm going to share a bonus tip from Tim about being on gigs with singers. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your music performance and improvisation to the next level. Now, Tim's new book, The Jazz Saxophone Book, is published by Share Music, and it's divided into four main parts that I'm going to talk about in a minute. The really cool thing, the really huge benefit, there's over 30 videos to illustrate main points and give practicing exercises. Now, disclaimer, I'm not an affiliate. I bought this copy. I did not get it as a gift. I did not ask for it as a gift. So there's no bias here. I'm giving you my honest opinion. Now, there's going to be links in the description below for buying Tim's book. This book is all about approaching improvisation in a melodic way. And that makes sense because Tim is such a melodic player. Now, his overall aim for the book, as he puts it, is to focus on practical matters with some bits of philosophy and history added for context. So there's lots of musical examples. Now, also, I just recently interviewed Tim for my Everything Saxophone podcast. That link will also be in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to share some of what I thought was the gold from his book that I think is going to really help you. Now, in looking at the table of contents, there's four main sections. There's foundational skills, anatomy of a song, building tension with advanced harmony, and deeper mastery. Plus, there's also short asides throughout the book that address avoid notes, that address turnarounds, licks, and so much more. Now, I'm going to say right away, this book is for all levels of musicians. Notice that I didn't only say saxophonists. All musicians can benefit from this book, as you're going to see with the tips I'm going to share with you right now. Tip number one. Tim didn't start the book with improvising on the blues, like most people do. He doesn't address the blues until chapter 22. And here's what he says, and this comes from page 230. So he says, for starters, I'd like to pick a fight with the educators who gave young musicians a blues scale and said, use that to improvise on the blues. It fits over all the chords. At its best, that approach is an honest attempt to get a person started improvising without filling their head with too much information. That's a worthy goal, but on the other hand, it is exactly what it is trying not to be, getting someone started by giving them information rather than giving them melody. He also goes on to say, I think it makes more sense to start beginning improvisers with a simple melody. So what I'm going to do I'm going to show you what he's talking about. So he shows you this simple melody and how you can add ideas before and after it. And by the way, they don't follow a blues scale. Number two, how to practice to become a creative improviser. This is a big pain point for everybody. Now, his process and practice routines for developing the skill of playing what you hear in your head, he calls this from the inside out and from the outside in. And this is taken from page 217 in his book. So he goes over his one hour practice routine that's divided into three areas. I'm going to focus on the first area, melodic exploration. Now, here's one exercise that you can try today and actually start to get results. Ideally, this is done with a real piano because you want to hear and feel the vibrations of the strings when you, you, know, when you play your instrument. Now, I've got a digital piano here, um, but here's a hack for you if you don't have a piano. And I didn't grow up with a piano. Get the Tonal Energy app. And you can go to the sound button on the bottom, you can go to the keyboard, the actual piano keyboard, and you could play your perfect fifth from here. Uh, I'll, keep this, uh, I'll keep this vertical for right now. So I could press the sustain button, and I could just go like that, and I could sustain that. And I could tap the sustain to 
uh, get rid of it. And you, ideally you want to do this in a lower register on the piano. So over here, if I was on tonal energy, uh, I'm going to go to my lowest notes over here, tap sustain, and have that playing like that. It's not as good as the real thing. It's not as good as a real piano, but um, it's worth trying out. Okay, so here's the exercise. You basically play a perfect fifth interval in the low register. I showed you that on the tonal energy. I would now do it on the piano. And let's say I chose A and E, and I'd use the sustained pedal. Now, I could explore many things with this. I could explore A minor. Let's make it A minor seven. I could explore A major. A major seven. I can do, gosh, I could do A seven, which would be A mixolydian. You could explore whatever you'd like to do. Now, I would start on any note and feel where it wants to go next. And I keep doing this until I get a little melody out of it. Tim makes a really important point though. You're not playing things you know already. Instead, you're actively seeking new material, something you haven't played before. Now, I'm gonna show you my interpretation. And on page 219 in his book, he shows you how to further develop this exercise. interpretation, I was feeling more um, concert A mixolydian, and towards the end I kind of threw in a flat three in there as well. That's just where it took me at that moment. Um, there's no judgment, you know, when you're doing this, you just play. It's sort of like journaling, and those of you that journal. You just write whatever comes to mind. This is the same thing you're exploring. Now your question may be, well, what if I don't hear anything in my mind? Tim answers this question by basically saying, Keep listening and use your imagination. You could always get inspiration from the outside, right? So listen to your favorite people. Now here's a quote from Tim, and it's basically this. Your ears will keep feeding you the same things over and over if you don't teach them how to hear new things. Are you ready for tip number three and another exercise? Let me know by typing exercise in the comments. Tip number three. It's all about rhythmic improvisation. Another huge pain point. Um, he deals with rhythmic improvisation in chapter 11. And in fact, it's like around page 88. Um, what he talks about is basically moving the melody around in the time. All right, so I'm gonna take an example of the melody from the Monk tune, Well You Needn't. That's the melody that uh, Tim talks about over here. And I'm gonna move it around. Uh, I'm gonna do my own interpretation and I'm gonna expand with some extra notes. <laughs> I'm going to share one more tip from Tim, and it's about being on a gig with a singer. But before I do that, hey, if you want to get access to the backing track and PDF of my variations to Well You Needn't, become a patron and support my YouTube channel. There's tons of video lessons with practicing tips, lessons on learning jazz, rock, blues, and funk licks, 
and so much more. Plus, you're helping me create more videos for you like this one today. Now, when you're done watching this video, head on over to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz Music, and I really, truly appreciate all your support. Here's that bonus tip. Now this comes from page 64, and it's essentially this. If you're on a gig with a singer, the audience really wants to hear the lyrics of the song. That's how they relate to the song. So don't get in the way of that, all right? Your job is to complement the singer's delivery of the song. So you need to know the song really well in order to pull this off. Now, Tim shares more tips about this, particular, um, about this particular pain point and so much more in this book. I really think that this would be a great resource for you to have. And it doesn't matter your level of improvisation. Um, and it honestly doesn't matter which instrument you play. I think this will benefit everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day.